Hello, my name is Lowell Hostot, and I wanted to share with you an idea that I'm very excited about that has come about uh, from having the technology available to us of Ableton Live and Max MSP. I, um, I'm a composer, I'm a violinist, and I've been a professional musician for over 40 years. And uh, my father was a symphony orchestra director, and he's the fir uh, first person that started um, influencing me as a composer and also uh, talking about the subject of the Overtone series. Uh, as a matter of fact, he had a chart in his office that was uh, showing not only the musical Overtone series, but just the frequencies of, of nature, of uh, sound, light, uh, electromagnetism, and I was always fascinated by that. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could uh, musically take the Overtone series and use it in a way that was uh, successful compositionally uh, in Western composition? As a violinist, I played uh, the unaccompanied Bach uh, sonatas and partitas, and I noticed that lowering thirds uh, in the scale would cause the harmonic series to resonate better. And then other times I would raise pitches, I would lower pitches. And so I, I, I came to appreciate the subject of intonation and uh, my father and I would have discussions uh, about the symphony orchestra, uh, particularly in the woodwind section, how important it was to know what types of tuning uh, you were using, if it was just or Pythagorean, at different times and at different moments. But uh, what I wanted to bring to you today is, is a new concept that goes beyond what we've been thinking about uh, regarding music. Uh, most of music in the past uh, two or three hundred years, four hundred years has been based on the uh, equal temperament system. And so the equal temperament system has been great. It allowed us to do a lot of great things, but I believe that historically we are now at a pivotal point that, uh, and the technology is here for us to step into a new type of tuning system. And that is one that actually integrates the harmonic series. And that's what I've called this project is integrated frequency. So before Bach we had harmony that was well established for the instruments that they had. Uh, you would tune a harpsichord to sound well in a, in a certain key, you would turn, tune a guitar to sound well in a certain key, you transition outside of that key and it, it didn't sound as good, it didn't um, resonate as well. Uh, and then with equal temperament it was like Bach had a new toy to play with. So he started expanding the concept of transitioning from key to key, and he became much more chromatic, uh, moving from one key to the other. And with that chromaticism came a greater focus on linear motivic development. And although Bach was not the first person to use motivic development, he in my estimation, was the first person to really maximize motivic development, and he set the foundation for composers after him of Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, on up uh, to early 20th century of Schoenberg. And Schoenberg started with the uh, harmony that was given to him from Bach on up into late Romanticism, but he came up with a new concept, which he called pantonality, in other words, each tone, each note was its own tonal center. And so with that was the advent of serialism, where composers began to serialize uh, not only pitch, but rhythms and dynamics. And that was a, a, a new type of composition that had, never been, uh, that had never existed before. And with that, it was almost like harmony was separated from the system. Although there were composers like Alban Berg who would compose beautifully harmonically inside of the 12-tone system, much of the 12-tone system was a break from harmony and from harmonic moorings. And then into the 20th century, you end up having people that look into spectra uh, spectralism composition of getting into microtonality and ambient sounds and experimentation along those lines. So pre-Bach we have very good, uh, very solid harmonic foundations that are based on the acoustics of sound. And then with the advent of equal temperament, 
you start moving away from that foundation of harmony into uh, chromaticism and high chromaticism and even into uh, today microtonality so my uh, my desire as a composer was to see these disparate systems uh, come together and to be used in the same system and even rhythm uh, to be put into the same system as these so I believe that it's possible to completely integrate rhythm, harmony, uh, diatonic melody, chromaticism, microtonality, and spectralism of all kinds uh, throughout the entire overtone system, all in one system, to where it's all functioning as one scale and in one uh, comprehensive uh, system. Of, of, of integration. And again, that's why I've called this integrated frequency. So we've had difficulty in the classical tradition of seeing these two subjects as the same subject of rhythm and, and pitch, rhythm and frequency. We've always allocated frequency to be, being measured by beats per second, and we've always allocated uh, rhythm as as being beats per minute, and yet I believe that these are all one system. They're, they exist together, and even though our brains, in terms of measuring it, have divided it into two subject, uh, separate subjects, they actually are one subject, and that's the subject of frequency. What, uh, what I've done is created a chart that takes frequency down not only to human hearing, but below human hearing. And I've also uh, correlated the tempos of beats per minute to match those frequencies. So for example, 40 hertz um, is the same thing as 2,400 beats per minute. And then on, on back down an octave from that 20 hertz is the same thing as uh, 1,200 beats per minute. And then 10 hertz is 600 beats per minute. 5 hertz is 300. 2.5 hertz is 150. 1.25 is 75. On down to your whole note, which is 0.3125 hertz and 18.75 beats per minute. So there's a congruence, or it's the same note that we're talking about. Even though we're bringing these frequencies below human hearing, they're still frequencies that are the same and they're congruent with each other. So what I've done is to look at the uh, what is below human hearing as being rhythm, the subject of rhythm, which of course it is, but actually giving it a name, giving those, those frequencies um, a name such as a quarter note. So for example, uh, 40 hertz would be the same thing as a 128th note or um, 20 hertz would be the same thing as a 64th note, and uh, 10 hertz would be the same thing as a 32nd note, 5 hertz a 16th note, 2.5 uh, hertz an eighth note, 1.25 hertz a quarter note. So we could literally set the tempo at quarter note equals 75 beats per minute, and that would give us the frequency foundation of 40 hertz. So here we, we, we see that frequency and tempo, or uh, pitch and tempo, it's all frequency, can exist as one, as one scale. So in the past hundred years, we've had composers in the classical music tradition that have been experimenting with some of these things, particularly Stockhausen. Uh, but it started back in early uh, 20th century with Pierre Schaeffer, John Cage, uh, Gricey, Harry Parch, these these guys were experimenting with with spectralism and ambient sound. There was a book written by Henry Cowell called New Musical Resources that uh, challenged us to think of rhythm uh, in a different way, uh, to think of it in terms of uh, possible polyrhythms and uh, expanding our normal traditional way of thinking of rhythm. Uh, and Conlon Nancaro, uh, the composer down in Mexico, 
in the early part of the 20th century had a player piano. He didn't have access to the digital audio workstations that we have today. Uh, if, if he had, he would have loved it. But he had a player piano that would, that would do some of these concepts of these macro polyrhythms um, against each other. And he, took, he was inspired by Henry Cowell's book, and uh, Giorgio Ligeti also was a fan of Nancaro's work, and Ligeti started uh, experimenting with these macro polyrhythms as well. Uh, Stockhausen uh, and, and John Cage also were looking for synchronicity between the subjects of frequency and rhythm, and Stockhausen did a lot of exploration into this. Of uh, He actually created the, the beginnings of, of what we now use in our modern-day synthesis, of additive, synth uh, additive synthesis. But he was trying to find a correlation uh, of how we could get rhythm and frequency to exist in the same, in the same uh, domain, in the same spectrum. And at the same time, you have uh, Pierre Boulez's uh, school, uh, Urcam in Paris, you had uh, software developers that were developing software which later would become Max MSP, which Ableton just incorporated into their software, and it's a perfect fit for Ableton. And so whether or not Ableton knew it or not, they became essentially the, the foundation and a place for experimentation that 100 years of, of uh, very sincere and deep uh, research by classical music uh, um, forefront thinkers had, had had been developing, and Ableton Live now gives it to us on, on a silver platter to be able to experiment with some of these things. So what I've done is take the overtone system, the overtone series, and uh, as I explained a minute ago, brought it down below human hearing to uh, to experiment with it and think of it as a tree. And as, as the trunk of a tree, uh, I have a tree in my backyard that has many branches coming off the, the trunk quite low. And then each one of those branches have other branches that are stemming off from those. And it, what I've done with the Overtone series is not only left it as one series, but as branches off of that series, creating their own Overtone series. I took the... Uh, 0.3125 hertz, and I'm calling that a whole note, or 18.75 beats per minute. That's the foundation. That's the lowest uh, part of the tree. That's the trunk of the tree. And so I took that and multiplied it by three, and that created 56.25 beats per minute and 0.9375 hertz. And so that's the third overtone of 18.75 beats per minute, or 0.3125 hertz. And then I multiplied 0.3125 by 7. And you could do this randomly with any number, but I'm just going up the overtone series and creating these new branches that come off of that first branch. And so I have an entirely new overtone series and tempo of, of the, uh, the 56.25 uh, beats per minute tree. And then over here, the time seven tree uh, is coming off at uh, 131.25 beats per minute. And so, and, and then each one of those trees could have a branch coming off of that. So what that does is it gives us a, a, a possibility of having multiple, not only multiple harmonic um, tonal, tonal possibilities that are all related harmonically to each other, and microtonally related to each other, but it also gives us the possibility of, of uh, these huge macro polyrhythms that could be created uh, and the relationships between them. Uh, when I was visiting my uncle uh, up in upstate New York, uh, he had a house that had a couch right in the middle of the room, and on both sides of the room, as I was sleeping overnight, they had uh, he had a mantel clock on one side of the room and a mantel clock on the other side of the room uh, with the both fireplaces, and I was sleeping or trying to sleep right in between them, and I noticed I couldn't go to sleep because I was counting these these uh, uh, the, the second hands uh, clicking between each other, and they had a point of congruence uh, after a hundred and something because they were not exactly timed, and so they would drift apart 
in terms of rhythm, and then they would come back together again with that, uh, and they would have a congruence point, and then they would start drifting. And so that happened. I think I finally fell asleep. But it was, that's a macro polyrhythm of, I'm just guessing, you know, 100 and something, 120 over 126 or something like that. Who knows? But that's the type of macro polyrhythms that Conley Nankero uh, was using and working with with his player piano experiments. So it's possible to to use this system uh, in, in, in very creative ways. Uh, the, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the way that overtone uh, series sounds, here's an example. Uh, you have the first node, and I call the first node um, the fundamental. Some people call it uh, zero, but I'm calling it the first node. And then you have the second node, which is the octave. And then you have the third node, which is the fifth. And then the fourth node, which is back to the octave again. And then you start having harmony created. And so here's our uh, our dominant seven chord. And then you go on up, and it, it turns into uh, diatonicism. And then it turns into chromatic. And then it turns into microtonal as you go on up. And I've created a 30-node scale uh, for that system. And so the overtone series is very unique because you can literally have all these various things happening inside of it. So the first uh, two octaves, you have harmony. And then the second octave, you have uh, literally you have things like a minor pentatonic scale. You, you, then you end up having a whole tone scale in there. You have a diatonic scale. You have uh, a major scale based on, uh, based on the second scale degree, which is Dorian. And then you have uh, the chromatic scale starting on the 13th uh, node on up to the 21st uh, or 23rd node. And then you start getting microtonal uh, from the 20, 21st node on up to the 30th node. And so literally you have everything that we uh, have worked with over the course of the last several hundred years with uh, traditional composition all lives inside of one system. And so what I've done is I've made congruent rhythm and, uh, and harmony and diatonicism and chromaticism and microtonality all inside of one system living together. And so the, the experiments that I've done are, are exploring some of this, and by no means have I uh, come to the end of it. It's just, they're just remedial experiments. It's the very beginning of, of doing this. And I'm very, very excited as a composer that this can actually live together uh, as, as one, uh, one essence. Instead of saying that, well, when you're do when you're working with serialism, that you can't do uh, harmony, or you know when you're working with uh, spectral spectralism, or with um, chromaticism or microtonality, that that just has nothing to do with with uh, with serialism or with chromaticism, uh, it, and or that rhythm is somehow a, a, a disparate system. I'm just I'm so excited that all of this can can live together, and so the the experiments that I have to show you are exploring what the possibilities are of this system. Beginning with the lowest fundamentals, here's an experiment in polyrhythms using the root frequencies of R5, R10, R20, R40, R80, and R120 at 75 beats per minute as one rhythmic block. R30 at 112.5 beats per minute and 225 beats per minute as another rhythmic block and R35 and R70 at 131.25 beats per minute and 525 beats per minute as the last rhythmic block. Many polyrhythms are created. At one point there's actually a ratio of 12 to 28 to 11. Um, the pitches were created by making a short note on each fundamental using the additive max synth that I uh, made. So the tempos and pitches of each rhythmic block are actually in the same family. There are three main rhythmic families against each other in polyrhythms. All of these families are related to each other as branches of the same tree, and the foundation is 18.75 beats per minute or 0.3125 hertz.
This was an experiment in two different overtone scale rhythms, R5 and R10 against R30 and R60. The familiar rock style is challenged by the con convergence of the two tempos and scales, creating polytonal and polytempo moments. Only two compositional components were used to create this piece, a bass pattern and a rhythmic pattern. R5 and R10 is in its corresponding tempo of 150 beats per minute, while R30 and R60 is in its tempo family of 225 beats per minute. What interested me as I brought the bass pattern down to the root of 5 hertz was that it highlighted the overtones of the additive synth that I made in Max. In the synth, I used the first five nodes of the overtone scale, detuning the upper nodes slightly. And the lower the synth goes, it becomes possible to hear the individual overtones inside the voice. What surprised me was how accurately this resembled an electric guitar's distortion planing uh, major chord harmonies along uh, with the bass line contour. I created uh, the beat pattern using my additive synths uh, lowest nodes at a short attack uh, with the ADSR so that the beats were perfectly tuned to their corresponding bass lines. In this experiment, I took a traditional harmonic progression derived from a single overtone scale in an arpeggiated pattern and distributed it to other related overtone scales in their corresponding tempo families. I used R40, R20, R160, and R200 in their tempo family of 75 beats per minute and 150 beats per minute. I used R60 and R120 in their tempo family at 112.5 beats per minute. The corresponding relationships created by the harmonic progression in multiple overtone scales and corresponding tempos creates polytonality and polytempo. I kept R60 in 75 beats per minute to experiment with a tonic dominant relationship uh, between the two instances of R40, then R60. R60 is derived from the third overtone of the root frequency of 0.3125 uh, hertz. The third overtone is the fifth scale degree, so the chord progression was played in R40 as tonic. Then it was played in R60, which is dominant, in the same tempo, then finally back to R40, which is tonic again.
This is a single melodic line stretching over the span of a majority of a 30 note overtone scale using the melody canonically in R40, R60, R20, R160, and R200. The lines create counterpoint against each other. This experiment plays with the possibility of serialism in the context of the chromatic scale which resides inside the overtone series, nodes 13 through 24. I used a 10-note pattern providing prime, retrograde, inversion, and retrograde inversion of the theme in the overtone scales of R20, R40, and R60. The R20 and R40 overtone scales are both in the tempo family of quarter note equals 75 beats per minute while the R60 scale is in its tempo family of half note equals 112.5 beats per minute. R60 is related to R20 and R40 as a branch off their family at the third node of 0.3125 hertz or whole note equals 18.75 beats per minute. Chords derived from the R40 scale are evenly spaced to provide a harmonic progression using one, minor one, 
five six four and five sus, uh, with a sus four, and finally ending on one. Because the chromaticism exists in the same overtone series as the chordal harmonies, they are congruent with one another. So serialism and harmony are actually synonymous. This experiment deals with the same 10-note pattern uh, used in the chromatic serial example above in three sections of the overtone scale. Uh, first, the lowest 10 nodes is the diatonic harmonic uh, region. Secondly, the middle 10 notes is the chromatic region. And third, the, uh, the highest 10 nodes are microtonal. Using the same uh, pattern in each of those sections, created the same contour of the theme, but not the same intervals, since the intervallic difference in the lowest 10 nodes are wide, and the intervallic differences of the highest 10 are much smaller. What I found interesting is that the motif could be recognizable, even feeling like the exact reflection, when comparing it against each of those three ranges. The intervallic differences between each of the ranges of the scale didn't seem to alter the recognizability of the pattern. From this experiment, perhaps a new way of dealing with motivic development can be obtained, what I call motive ballooning. Consider drawing a motive on the outside of a balloon with a marker, then blow the balloon up full of air and the written motif expands, let the air out a little bit, and the motif shrinks. And so the mo motive is uh, still recognizable even though the size of the intervals change. In this piece, I use two different tempos in the family of R20, 75 beats per minute, and R, and uh, 120 beats per minute. So each of the three parts of the R20 scale had eight versions of the motif, prime, inversion, retrograde, retrograde inversion, in 75 beats per minute and 150 beats per minute. So this all in all gave me a total of 24 different versions of the motif, each of them only used once in the traditional serialist ethos. So even, even uh, though serialism is employed, each of the three sections of the overtone scale are harmonically and tonally congruent as all the notes exist inside the same overtone scale. Harmony and melody, or one could say vertical and horizontal properties, are actually one and the same. This experiment was designed to showcase microtonality as ornamentation. In traditional performance, we use vibrato, pornamento, and shifting, and even intonation differences to shape diatonic and chromatic lines. These are all uses of mic microtonality in our traditional Western tradition. I wanted to take that concept one step further using the upper partials of the microtonal scale uh, in R20 in ornamentation and melody. Underneath the melody, using harmonies derived from the central nodes of the R20 scale, I created a progression to accompany that melody. Aesthetically, I attempted to give some personality to the melody by manipulating the attack time of the synth's ADSR remotely. Also, with a controller, I manipulated the first partial of the additive synth that I built to create vibrato with LFO in the voice for the accompanying harmony part.
In this experiment, I use the same ascending and descending scalar pattern in multiple related overtone scales. In each 30-node scale, I used the upper partials to create the microtonality. In the R5 family, I used R5, R10, R20, R40, R80, and R120 in 75 beats per minute and 150 beats per minute and from their respective tempo, tempo family. The root tempo of this family is whole note equals 18.75 or 0.3125 hertz. In a related branch from that group, I used R30 in 112.5 beats per minute and 225 beats per minute, its respective tempo family. This family is derived by multiplying the above 18.75 by 3. I also used R35 and R70, another branch from the R5 family in 131.25 beats per minute, its tempo family. This family is derived by multiplying the above 18.75 by 7. I hoped to create a whirring of scales against each other, all related, yet in their own distinct families, like branches off the trunk of a tree. Polyrhythms and polytonalities are created by the scalar interactions. This is an experiment using the various parts of the overtone scale in combination with the single R20 scale. Using rhythm, a bass line, a harmonic comping pattern, harmonic counterpoint, chromatic and microtonal patterns, along with a diatonic melody, all sections of the overtone scale are utilized. Using loop-based composition, an extended form emerges from layering of the various elements.
now that I have conducted several looping experiments with the integrated frequency system, this is a short through composed non-looping composition. The first section is R20, essentially the key of E, using the full spectrum of the 30 note scale. The middle section is in R30, the key of B, again using the full scale range. The final section returns to R20, however the ending chord cadence is on B major while the ending low note is E. The first and last sections are in 75 beats per minute congruent with the R20 scale, while the middle section is in 56.25 beats per minute congruent with the R30 scale. I endeavored to use interesting as aspects of the overtone scale such as melodic microtonal gestures, contrapuntal chromaticism, and harmonic motion. Thanks for listening to all of this and uh, tracking with me. I really appreciate your taking the time to listen. And if you're out there and you have uh, ideas uh, along these lines, maybe you're uh, experimenting with some areas that I have not yet seen, uh, please contact me. I'd love for you to get a hold of me. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, lowellhost.com. I would love for you to uh, to see that if you have any other ideas or, or thoughts or questions, or maybe there's some th articles that I've written that might benefit you there as well. Um, I'd like to be a part of a community that's uh, pushing forward music history, and I believe that this is where music history really lives. Uh, we are on the very forefront of new developments, and I'd love to, to hear from you.